we've got a really cool project that Joe and his team have put together. Um, a local architect in their area brought us in to do some of the technical drawings um, and some of the hydrofloor movable parts. But uh, Joe and his team put together the construction team and all the uh, contractors involved to get everything put together um, and brought you know some of the best in the industry together to make this work. Very, you know, it looks like a simple shape of a pool, but probably one of the most, one of the very most complicated uh, movable floor systems that Twinscape has done. And I'm sure it's, it's Joe, I think it's one of your guys' first rigid movable floor pools um, that can add to some, they're very technical. There's a lot of detail, very little uh, room for error. All the, uh, all the dimensions and all the details have to be spot on. So um, you can see, uh, you know, obviously with Watershape University, we've got a ton of sponsors and we appreciate all them being involved. Many of them we're, we're involved in the job that uh, Joe did with his team and Jack. Um, and you can see them on our screen now. Make sure, uh, you know, we, we appreciate their support. They support us both on the money side to provide better education, put podcasts together and that kind of stuff. And then Joe and his team is going to do a great job of walking you through the construction um, of this project. So make sure you uh, keep track of the Wednesday webinars. There's lots to be seen. Um, we're going to be in a lot of the different locations this year teaching classes. Um, we're even going to be doing doing them in some different locations this year. So make sure to get into Watershape University's website and uh, look into what opportunities you guys have to get an education. Please don't, uh, the other thing is don't let's, you know, no screen recordings, no screenshots. Um, there is some proprietary information in here from, from the drawing set side and so, and the construction side. So um, you have a questions tab if you want to post questions or have any um, necessary, necessary information, me or one of the other hosts will try to break in and kind of stop the conversation to have a con to answer those questions for you. But um, you're going to see it's pretty cool to see what one of these systems takes to put together. Um, and, and I'm sure Joe and his team is going to get into some of the really tight technical confines to get it done. Cool. So today we're going to just review the project, talk about, like Rick said, uh, some of the design considerations, some of the um, the site that, that made it uh, difficult to actually achieve the, the project as a whole throughout the two years or so that we've been building it. Um, some of those design changes that come last minute or a little later than last minute. Um, and uh, some cool pictures. So like Rick said, if you have questions, ask throughout. If it's something that is slide specific, we may stop, but we'll probably answer all those questions at the end. I'm Joe Dempsey Jr. I work for my family com my family construction company. I worked summers growing up. Um, I graduated from Colorado State University 2012, did an hour of a year of traveling came back, decided that I wanted to uh, work for the family company full time, worked in the field for almost four years, then I started working off his stuff. Uh, I'm also the, the quality construction go-kart champion. So if you ever come to Denver, uh, give me a call, we can check out some pools and maybe I can school you in some go-karts. Quality construction, uh, we. We service Denver, Boulder, Cherry Hills Village in Colorado. It was started by Joe Sr., my father, 1985. He's been building since 1969. Our construction manager, Micah, <clears throat> he started with us in 2012. Micah brought to our company a huge amount of knowledge when it comes to not only pool construction, that, that he, uh, but, but also plastering and shock creating. So having Micah as our construction manager uh, has allowed us to bring that in-house. In Colorado, we don't have the same types of subs and everything as you know Arizona, uh, Florida, the, the bigger places with more pool contractors. So to maximize our, our quality, we bring uh, a lot of the work in-house. We are a commercial contractor for residential uh, pool projects, mostly. Uh, by that, I mean we work for general contractors, landscape architects, architects uh, on new home construction, major renovations of the house, pool house, pool house additions. Uh, we don't just go back, go into backyards to add a swimming pool. Joe Senior runs the commercial division. So um, in a couple of weeks, we're finishing a 185,000 gallon pool uh, commercially also. 
our company focuses on what we can what we call proactive training so we have not only do i have my iwi but we have 11 certified water shape foremen and so on on the list we we believe that you should take advantage of what other people learn people like rick and everyone else that that teaches with rick they have not only experienced a lot but they've also shared their experiences with other contractors uh, the the most important thing for me from water shape is that we all have something to learn from everyone so even though rick may teach a class i'm sure that the instructors learn a lot every class as well there's our team and fleet jack Hey guys, Jack Albanese here. Um, I graduated from Auburn University back in 2020 and joined uh, Twinscape at the beginning of 21. Been here for a little over or about two and a half years now. It's been been good, been challenging, but uh, you know I'm happy to be in this industry. A lot of uh, amazing craftsmen and people who are really dedicated to their work, and uh, it's just great to be around. Um, any questions on hydrofloors or movable pool floor technology? Uh, me and my boss, Jim Farrell, uh, we're, we're the guys to help you. Uh, my contact information is here. Feel free to reach out at any time. And both him and Jim are both awesome at getting back to you quickly, getting you the information that you need uh, very quickly. Our project team marked the landscape with Luke Sanzone. He designed the landscape. Obviously, Rick, Red Rock Contractors designed the pool. Luke and Amy Denny from Alpine Tile installed our, our tile interior to escape movable floor. Stout Mechanical installed the mechanical system that we'll briefly look at. Site conditions, we had about 60 feet of, of grade change across the backyard. So there's some shoring involved. We had about five foot access with really about 18 inches for, for the steps uh, coming down the other side expansive soils so even though we didn't have even though we needed micro piles for this hillside installation we also had to uh, would have had to use them for expansive soils uh, void form and that type of thing we mobilized on this project january of 2021 so right before we were able to place concrete we had a big wave of covid go through through our guys we were just fighting uh, the same thing everyone else was fighting through covid Quick overview of the site. <clears throat> Our access is down, down this corridor, which you'll see coming across the yard. We have a stainless steel cold plunge over here, our spa, our pool, our two-sided infinity edge cut back towards the pool. Obviously, a catch basin, some water features, some other really cool stuff that we'll see is just some stainless steel slides, some hidden underground play areas and storage areas that, that MARPA designed as well. <clears throat> Grading plan, you can see it's just a lot of lines, big elevation change. We look at that over the aerial, never looks as steep uh, looking straight down on it. This was um, probably a month before we mobilized to build the pool. The pool is going to be over here in this location. This was taken uh, within a week. This is what the site looks like now. So we're we're still they're still finishing up some of the finer details of the landscaping. Uh, he has taken over the yard next to his house also. So the it's it's one of those projects that you're definitely blessed to have because the homeowner one loves water, uh, and two he he keeps adding stuff to it to make it just cooler and cooler. This was <clears throat> same time as the first photo. Photo is going to go over here again. Just gives you a nice view of, of all that grade change that we're dealing with, all the rocks that MARPA had helped coordinate and install. And then a view of last week. This is what it looks like at the moment. I would bring up one thing just when we get into projects of this caliber, obviously, Joe and your team, you start getting into shoring and shoring engineering and a, and a number of other experts that have to get involved. Um, you know, it, it takes 10 extra 
levels of, of, of expertise when you get into projects like this. So in addition to swimming pool side hydraulics, the movable floor systems, there's a whole another set of engineering that gets created just to be able to excavate a hole up against a project of, you know, this close to a project and at these kind of depths. So the, the trickiest thing about movable pool floors is the depth of the pool gets dramatically deeper. So um, very simply, a, a six foot pool becomes nine or 10 or 12. So the excavation in tight quarters can be pretty critical. So you're going to bring some other team members in. Exactly. And that's where, you know, we have our arsenal of our um, engineers and everyone that we prefer to use that we've created that that relationship with over the years. Uh, but that is one of the main reasons why we are a commercial contract for residential projects, because projects that we work on, you have to have all of those different layers uh, within the team to make sure that, that it ends up with a, a successful project in the end. Thanks, Rick. So we start our design and, and planning phase. Uh, there is also, you can see just for, because I know Paula is watching, there are some uh, custom handrails that are being fabbed. They're working their way over through the property. So all of these walkways will have the same style custom handrails follow. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we show up, we have, a, we have a 465, give or take, square foot pool. It's almost 12 feet deep. We have a 65 square foot spa. We have 34 total DMX lights. We have five of those are the Fontana stainless steel laminars. We have eight LED strips, 21 other low voltage lights within the pool, spa, plunge pool, catch basin. Once we were, once we had started uh, installing our rebar, the homeowner asked us to add underwater speakers and a swim current system. We, we looked at the pros and cons of all the different systems and the super sport from Badu was, uh, had the most benefits for the area, the, the one area that we could actually fit it in this vessel with all the other constraints uh, with, with the Twinscape system that we'll talk about. Stainless steel cold plunge, there's, the homeowner wants to make sure that his pool and his spa are always and his cold plunge are always within one degree of his set temperature. If he wants it at 80 degrees and it's 100 degrees that day, no matter what, he will chill his pool. If he wants his pool at 95 and it's zero degrees that day, he'll achieve that. So he has 1.4 million BTUs of uh, heating, 15 tons chilling, and then the, the whole pool and spa interior uh, was done with light stream style with Alpin. Quick basic overview. Spa with the with the four sided bench. This bench was removed through the design phase. We have a sun shelf that operates on a scissor lift. Uh, we have these two wing benches also operate separately, and then the main floor system. the The steps are um, come somewhat connected in a way to the sun shelf and the main floor. As the main floor lifts up, it will lift up each step as the top of that step. Uh, the tread reaches the same elevation as the the floor that's that's moving. When you call Jack, uh, Jack will you send Jack your your rough plans? He will produce that plan that I just showed. It'll also give you a, a nice rendering to be able to show your client. This is what you know. You can your kids can play on the deck. You can host parties on this deck. You can press a button. All of a sudden. Your spa submerges into uh, the floor, submerges into the spa. As it drops down, the benches lock into place. The floor continues to drop, and you can have an, an operational spa. You can set this, Jack can set it so that the spa is six inches deep. If you want to have a spa sun shelf, then you can, they can set it to um, pretty much any depth they ask for, as long as it's not below their maximum depth. Yeah, Joe, if I can, yeah, this is all operated by a uh, touch screen. Uh, it's very, very user friendly. Everybody gets their own logins. You can have a new login for parents if they have young kids. You don't want them to have a the option to go down to depth, or you want you want to keep them out. You know, very user friendly, very safe. And uh, as Joe said, you can stop it at any point from flush with the rest of the terrace. You know, party time 
all the way down to your maximum swim depth and anything in between. It also <clears throat> counts because it locks into place, which I'll show you. Uh, it is approved as an ASTMF 1346 safety cover. Um, and then the insulating factor of the actual buoy system, the foam blocks that are underneath the floor, also it makes this a very energy efficient pool, if that's a thing. Looking at Rick's plans that he produced for us, he has, <clears throat> um, just to talk a bit about how the, the pool floor system works, we have a hydraulic ram located over here. It engages, pushing to the right, pulls cables through this mat, this main pulley, um, which diverts the cables to the other pulleys that are fastened to the floor. Uh, all of those cables extend out to pulleys that, so basically vertical pulleys that then allow the cable to go up towards the and connect to the the, the twinscape floor system, and it actually pulls this floating floor down. So again, this is an older rendition, it's changed a bit, but it's a great illustration. Cables going up, you can see the buoy systems, the foam blocks underneath the floor. So that, that's part of what makes this a, a safety cover is that when, if the power goes out or if there's damage to the system or anything like that, then you can release the floor, it will slowly float up to the top and it will automatically lock into place without power. Uh, and you'll, you're able to, again, create a safe environment. Press the button, floor drops down. You can make the sun shelf drop down. As the floor gets past the each step, the step locks into place um, on this frame, continues dropping. Now, if the client wants to, to swim, he, he wanted full control of everything. So if he wants to swim back and forth, um, I know 27 feet's not very long to swim, but I would tire out pretty quickly. So if he wants to, he press the button, he can drop it further, and then again, drop it even further. So he can swim back and forth comfortably. Um, now it's now it's a workout pool. He, he also, he wanted the swim current basically because his kids loved it, loved playing it. Um, if he swims against that or swims back and forth, he has the option. And this this pool, guys, is a little bit more complicated. We, we can do a lot of these systems very simply where they don't have scissor lifts um, and a number of other hydraulic platforms in them. A lot of them are a singular buoyancy system, and, and the stairs will stack into a rack. But this one, because of all the different or, or all the different configurations that the client was requesting, Jack and his team had to get very um, creative to come up with all the solutions so that he could have all these different floor levels. A lot of times we can drop it at any elevation and stop stairs, but we don't have the ability to go up and down with different sections of the pool. This one with all the different mechanisms in the spa, having a scissor lift and also the Baja shelf added a lot of complexity, but it also gave them a lot more flexibility. Yep. <clears throat> Design considerations over, over our 11 foot, 11 inch tall walls, we have to have 32nd of an inch vertical tolerance. I know you're saying, your grout joints deeper than a 32nd of an inch. What we're talking about is making sure that as these rollers go up the wall, the, the walls aren't cocked in. They're um, perfectly, perfectly plumb. We can't have protrusions past the tile. So all of our, our wall returns, our lights, speakers, our swim jet, everything needs to be flush with or behind the tile at all times. Uh, we'll show, we'll talk about some of the rollers, the locking pins, the mounting anchors, bond wires. Rick, Rick gives us the plan with, with everything that we need on it. Uh, what you can't tell on here is he also shows where our locking pins are located. So we, we know what we, um, there's a detail structurally, what we need to do within the wall for these uh, sockets to be installed by Twinscape. As the floor rises, uh, it puts tension on a chain that's connected to each one of these pins. As it, as it gains tension, it basically inserts this pin into the wall. This makes it so even if you have a group of people walk onto the floor, you don't get that dock feeling where it's gonna uh, move up and down. It's just locked into place at the maximum height. 
it shows us where all of our rollers are. So these are exactly what they sound and look like. They're just fastened to the bottom of the, the Twinscape floor. And it just makes it so that it moves up and down smoothly against the walls. It doesn't shift side to side, again, like a buoy uh, as it's going up and down. <clears throat> we have our <clears throat> no drill zones. The Rick's clearly laid out on here. Uh, sorry, these are the drill zones. So no plumbing underneath them. The, they're, they spec they're going to drill nine inches deep. They ask for nothing to go at least within 12 inches. The Twinscape plan shows where each of those anchors is actually going to be placed exactly. And then <clears throat> There's also our bond wires. Uh, I think there's 19 bond wires for this system that need to be stubbed out of the concrete, obviously um, bonded to our, our rebar shell. So as we're pouring the floors, we're carefully making sure, counting so when one person is in track of just making sure we don't lose a bond wire. <clears throat> for a movable floor system, we have our, our ANA um floor cleaning system underneath the movable floor since we're not going to access underneath the system we need to make sure that as debris and organic matter falls uh, between the cracks lands down here that it's getting suspended and then getting sucked into our main suction outlet uh, filtered so that we don't have you know a bunch of crap under there between the annual servicing these are routed very carefully to make sure because this is a, a pool that's built on micropiles with void form. We, we designed the floor to be extra thick to still get our proper coverage over our rebar and over the, the plumbing, these plumbing routes that you'll see within the floor. Make sure that they're not, you know, some of these we have to position, every one of them we position perfectly to make sure that they're not going to get damaged when the floor system work or is installed. So <clears throat> construction phase begins. They're, they're excavating down. They have geothermal in this hillside. Uh, so they, we decided to go with micropiles and then every five feet, they welded a, a steel mesh and steel beams to the micropiles. The micropiles also uh, go all the way up to support this beam, which which the general contractor built a building over for us to, to work through the winter since it was obviously snowy. This is our layout day. So our guys are up on ladders, 10 feet in the air, making sure that everything is perfectly um, parallel, plumb, square, especially anything with the cover always needs to be square and making sure that it, it lays out according to the landscape architect's design um, parallel again to the house and then the addition that's going over here. <clears throat> a couple of weeks later, they've continued, they finished excavating down there about halfway in the last picture. Uh, this guy, normal size human, he just allows you to see how deep this is. These are 16 foot uh, two by fours we handpick all our two by fours, just to make sure that our, our full height one-sided forms are as, as straight um, and as perfect as possible. We've staked in to the ground, staked in halfway because it's so tall, staked in again. Uh, luckily our stakes fit through the, the holes in the mesh over here. Very sturdy forms. Uh, anytime you have weather protection, you always have to have way more lights than you ever expect, winter, uh, shorter days, you don't want to be working in a cave, squinting to try to figure out what what you're doing. We have 800,000 BTUs of, of heat also pumping into this area. Clear poly to let light in. Underneath the, the sun shelf, we use structural geofoam blocks to build it up. We use, um, we're going to install, you'll see our blue board foam or it's two inches of blue board foam. So R10 insulation around the whole perimeter, which we install on, on every pool. Since we live in Colorado, we design everything to be kept open year round. We do get freezing temperatures. We didn't have access 
uh, to put the foam on afterwards along this area. So we put it on, use it as our form, which is pretty typical for us as well. Our geofoam blocks are installed. We've started to, to lay out our ring bars. Today's the day that our homeowner calls us and says, hey, I really want to add some speakers and a swim jet. So we scrambled, had a couple phone calls with Rick, figured out which one we wanted to use. There's only one place to put it. And it's along this wall, which we'll see. We have our <clears throat> void form down, our masonite on top of it. You can see barely we've uh, fastened the masonite together with other masonite, very thin, uh, eighth of an inch. We have our void form on top of our geofoam blocks as well. Make sure that, that that section is protected from the expansive soils lifting and heaving into the floor of the pool. Each of our micropiles is has a welded connection to it as well. So all the micropiles are, uh, at, are connected to our potential bonding grid once we get our rebar in there. Rebar's in. We have our <clears throat> swim jet, uh, a speaker, a second speaker, and then a third speaker is underneath the sun shelf. Again, there were not many options to put uh, anything extra in this. So those were the locations, that, basically the only locations that were, up, that were available. Heat's pumping in. <clears throat> we have um, extra rebar underneath where that hydraulic ram is. Make sure that all that extra force that that hydraulic ram is exerting on our pool shell, we have the proper reinforcement there. We haven't done our rebar on our um, infinity edge wall yet. Our plan is we're going to shoot the lower section, all the walls, shoot the, the floor of the catch basin and the walls of the catch basin. Same thing with the spa, come back, install our full, uh, our one sided form. Uh, so we're not fastening the form to the rebar, we're going to fasten it to the concrete with spacers and everything between the rebar and our forms. One of our rules, we do use lap splices for our rebar. One of our rules, though, is that we never use, uh, we never do a triple lap splice. So with as much rebar as in here, we did a, a quick detail. We, we broke it apart with how we're going to build it, which um, which pieces of rebar are going to go in when. We reviewed it with our, our project managers um, and our field team, made sure that they understand so that they could install this. It ended up being uh, everything on four inches um, to make sure that we didn't have those triple splices. I'm very confident you'll see the back of our shell, very confident in my uh, nozzleman's ability, but that's just our rule, no triple splices. <clears throat> our bond wires are installed. Again, one guy is just in charge of being of making sure we don't lose our bond wires. As the, the floor is poured and vibrated, that, that one guy will hold it. If he needs to hold it with a um, broom handle or something from a distance, then set it down once the floor is vibrated and screeded then we won't, we didn't lose any. It's always an accomplishment. You can see our, uh, behind our wall section, behind our speakers, everything like that, we have notch out to make sure we get our proper uh, concrete placement behind everything. Now the most important step to this point for us, our pre-shot creep walkthrough. This is, everyone knows it's way easier to to fix anything before you place concrete. So we spend a half a day or in, in some cases a whole day going through reviewing the plans with our, our construction manager and our project manager, double checking everything to make sure that our elevations are all good, make sure that all of our, our lights are straight and at the same elevation, especially when we have multiple low voltage lights, we don't want them. Um, it, as minuscule as one inch off. And this allows us to go back in and as guys have walked up and down the rebar, they can just make sure that everything's all good. Make sure all of our tie wires are pushed back, make sure we have proper coverage for concrete over. Now that we've set our wires that we're gonna cut to for shotcrete, we can make sure we have proper coverage. 
the other thing to remember when we're doing a movable floor, that system's getting built overseas. So we don't have room for adaptation because it's getting constructed usually same time, right? So that product's being manufactured to the strictest tolerances. The product in the field has to match the tolerances. We're going to ship all this stainless steel that's been passivated and designed to go in underwater. It has to match when we get there. So the, the, the time it takes after this stage to make sure it's right is critical. And then when we do any pool that's got a lot of tile in it or all tile, to Joe's point, you don't want lights off even by an inch because that nice two inch grid you put on the entire pool identifies every mistake you've made in the project, right? Because every pool light is either going to fall above or below a grid line. You want to make sure all that stuff ties in nice and tight. Yep, exactly. Which the until Twinscape came out and said, yeah, this is the correct size, um, I had some anxious feelings. So <laughs> that was it. I slept pretty well that night. That's understandable. Yeah, I, I was just going to say the uh, our engineering team, they're very good about, you know, telling you exactly what you need, uh, you know, exactly what we're expecting. And we tell you exactly what we're building you. And, you know, at that point, you just got to nail it. And, uh, you know, if you're if you're a water shaped guy, I know you can. So. <clears throat> so we're ready to pour the floor to get our concrete pump in. We need it to also uh, prep for shock creep. So we have our 375 CFM compressor. We have our um, air nozzle, our air wand connected to it. Make sure that we have proper CFM for shock creep while we're also uh, using our air lance. That is chained to our skid steer, which is chained to our, our concrete pump because we're right at the edge of the hill. This is the staircase that we used. Didn't matter if there was snow, uh, it wasn't a staircase then. It was more of a slide, uh, but this is what my guys carried everything up and down to, to get this done uh, every day. So right at the edge of the hill, everything's anchored in together. Floor is poured. We have a paste receptive uh, surface profile on, our, on all of our floors. Make sure that it's rough enough to receive the shotcrete paste. All of our Floor cleaner heads, the bottom of the uh, cap is always going to be the top of our floor elevation. So they spend a lot of time making sure that that's dialed in so that as we pour our floors, uh, we don't have to pull out uh, a tape measure as often to make sure that we're, we're exactly where we need to be. We have the elevations preset before we get to the concrete phase. Our air lance is over here um, in the in the rebar, <clears throat> we don't need a notch because these are these are ninety degree walls dying directly into the the floor. Day one is done. We have our gin well, our um, mason's wheel, because it's so deep to lift all of our our trimmings and rebound out during during shock creep days. We installed our, our forms on our shared walls again. We don't do, we do non-contact lap splices uh, on all of our shared walls. Even though again, we're confident those are the walls that we wanna just make sure that we don't have any shadows or voids behind. Now, I love when my guys send me pictures after Shot Creek because we strip our forms. We always do full height one-sided forms because we're insulating all of our pools. So when they send us pictures and you can see no voids, then it's a happy day. It's always, it's almost always a happy day uh, at a quality construction. We have uh, boxes built around where our, where our jet plumbing is in the spa, make sure that we're not taking up the wall. Uh, there's cut out around some of our other bigger fittings to make sure that we can have them recessed. The roof is gone. We've installed our blue board foam. We have a contractor that is basically pumping in gravel. When we have no access for, for backfill, again, since we over excavate every pool, uh, we have to backfill. Not always very easy. So we use this contractor. They basically just dump gravel into a truck, they pump it over, and they just flub it into place. We follow behind them with our plate tampers, make sure it's tamped down. <clears throat> Tent goes up, Alpen tile shows up, Luke applying the colloidal silicate, primary waterproofing. 
Again, we have um, temperature sensors, Bluetooth temperature sensors. So every, every morning our guys log in, send the temperatures from the night before into the office, make sure because we're working through the winter, if the heater were to turn off overnight, we know we need to check the temperatures, make sure if they drop below our minimum of 40, then we need to triple check everything, make sure that, that we didn't have any failures. Hopefully everything's cured before then. Here, I don't recall us having any issues with the heaters. Uh, that not only is that good for day to day, but if there is ever a warranty issue, we would have logs to be able to show that these are all the pictures of the steps we took, and this is the temperature uh, in the vessel in the coldest areas throughout the process as well. One, one thing we did is we drilled holes in the two by fours. We pulled the, <clears throat> the bond wires through the two by fours, and then we uh, screwed those to the floor so that as people walk, they don't accidentally kick and snap off one of those bond wires. It gets lost or we have to demo and, and fix it. Control pads are up. Greg Andrews came for about a week, I think, to help uh, Luke and Amy and, and us, some of our team helped them. Waterproofing is on, two different colors, so you can make sure you get full coverage um, over the layers. <clears throat> Luke, Amy, Greg Andrews, this was an awesome, awesome opportunity for Michael Parks, one of my best friends that it also works here. He's our, our tile guru. He trained with Luke and Amy every day throughout this whole project, learned a lot, uh, made some good friends too. Luke and Amy are awesome. This day, they, they installed all this tile uh, in the one day. Um, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, if, nobody, if anybody's not worked with Luke and Amy before, their their uh, attention to detail, and especially on a project like this, is is quite impressive. And and they spend a lot of time understanding their products, their product mixes, their application methods. Um, they are they are the best to learn from for sure. They're never in a rush. Um, sometimes that can be a problem, but for the for the end result is they they are very tedious to make sure their tile work is is the best that you can make it. And they're very technically acknowledged behind all the different products and base products that they put behind their system. So. They are, they are a key member of a team on a project like this. You don't want to spend all this time and money on tile um, and, and not have those kind of players in, in place or have them not float this pool perfectly and then be fixing it after the fact. <clears throat> so uh, you can barely see over here, our, our swim jet is actually recessed. If you, um, all of our speakers are recessed, our, um, Vacuum fitting, everything like that is recessed. Luke and Amy did this nice detail around our wall channel drain. Make sure it's recessed. We used uh, the deep dish jet niches from CMP. Uh, and then again, the light is recessed. Toadscape shows up. This is the spa system, scissor lift, craning it into place. It's now in the spa. The, the way it works basically is the as the spa floor drops, the benches land on top of these brackets and then rest on top of those brackets. Once the, the, the scissor lift floor system lifts up again, these L brackets, once they get to the, the benches, they pick up the benches and then lift them up with the floor system. Stainless steel is installed. Tile is started, finished. Uh, we do have a skimmer over here, so for safety, this, this uh, coping piece is just dry set in place. Make sure that if a kid were to put their hand in there while the floor is, is lifting up, no matter what, it won't, uh, most importantly, hurt the kid or whoever it is. Um, if it's a toy or something, it won't damage the floor. Uh, one, one little subtlety that you can't even tell if you're walking over it. All the jets are recessed, <laughs> returns are recessed. Floors all the way up. Full systems going in. Here's the sun shell uh, scissor lift. These are gonna go on the wall to, for the benches. Each one of these two benches moves separately. 
the framing for the main floor section is in. There's a, a hatch in the middle, um, an access hatch, the spa also, the whole floor of the spa is removable. There's four bolts, unscrew the bolts, screw in some T-handles, and then you lift up four guys, lift up uh, the access hatches. Buoy systems under there, this floor system, just <clears throat> um, this is the main floor system that is pulled down with the pulleys. There's Amy down there. So again, just to show you, kind of give you a scale of the depth, uh, you can see Amy's comfortably walking down there. For tiling the, the steps, you just lift the step out of place, move it over. It's pretty heavy, so it's a four man job again, but they're tiling. Tiling the steps, <clears throat> tile's all done. Here's the spa hatch removed. It's larger than the pool one, but that is the whole um, floor. So it, it blends in almost seamlessly. If you look for the four bolts, uh, that's the only thing that, that you'd have to, that you would notice to be able to tell that this floor comes off. Underneath the pool, you can see our, the cage over the hydraulic ram going over to the pulleys, pulleys divert over to the vertical pulleys, which go up to pull the floor down. We have <clears throat> jacks in right now to, to support the floor while they're working on it. And then the chains that as they get, as they gain tension, that will push the um, locking pin into place and lock it into place at the, at the maximum height. Big scissor lift. Just to show you again the size of this stuff. Here's Amy. Say she's a normal sized human, Luke. Uh, they're tiling the, the benches this time, working in conjunction. As Twinscape is installing one section, Luke and Amy are, are tiling the section that they had installed last time or previously. Picture of the ram with some of the, the pulleys and cables. Again, it's the way it works seems simple, but there is a lot more that goes into this that Twinscape uh, figures out and engineers to make this work seamlessly. <clears throat> Floor system is installed, it's up. Uh, we had to wait to fill it. So we've just filled it. It's being commissioned as we speak. But you could tell um, there are, again, more railings that are being built for the, the property. But this li living on a hillside, they wouldn't have had much um, hardscape to host people. Now they have this whole huge deck to host people on. And then, boom, the, the kids want to throw a pool party. They just press a button and then they have a whole pool. Mechanical room, pretty basic. Uh, seven pumps, a little bit of six inch plumbing. Um, sanitation automation and telecams. There's the telecenter. Everything that we build has uh, sanitation automation, computer automation. Behind the authorized personnel only, this is the, the boiler room. Impressive, again, 1.4 million BTU, 15 tons of cooling. Everything that touches the water is titanium. Make sure that um, as our chlorinated pool water comes into contact with, with the plate heat exchangers, the temperature sensors, um, high limit switches, all that, all, all those wells are also either stainless steel or titanium. View from the house. Can't, you may never be able to tell that there's a pool here. Press the button, drop the pool down. They are currently commissioning the pool, diving it, always with a, with a partner underneath there, taking out some of the, you know, tweaking, very small final tweaks. Anything that's this custom and this um, intricate takes a while for, for for you to make sure that it works properly. Twinscape, this is the second Twinscape pool that we've done with, with Rick. Um, the other one works great as well.
another view. These guys are awesome, Tom. From above, you can see the shape of the, the benches, the steps, bench, sun shelf, main pool floor, spa perimeter, then the bench, and then the main floor uh, once that's pre-installed. From the other side, looking back at the house, a lot of rocks throughout the whole property. We have some uh, wick channels here. Make sure you can see there's the water as it flows over the edge is not going to get, uh, not going to spread down the wall, create efflorescence. We do have a grading system in here. It did rain, so our water levels higher than usual, but we have a grading system in here as well, removable grate. <clears throat> Random stuff from the property. Storage, playhouse, it's all about the kids here. Uh, spas, dropping down. So the main floor is supporting the bench as it's going down, and then it's gonna hit the support and boom, the floor continues dropping and the bench is locked into place. Same thing with the, the pool steps. It's very cool to see. That's it. Hopefully we're going to have a, a field trip during one of the water shape uh, courses in Denver to this project. The whole landscaping will be done by then. Uh, the whole pool will be commissioned up and running and uh, hopefully some of you guys can come check it out with us. Yeah, we're, the goal is when we do our advanced construction course in Boulder, we're going to be able to do a tour of this property. So one of the one of the benefits of that that opportunity will be able to see all of Joe's Joe and Jack's work in place, um, and and how well it works and what it looks like. So um, it'll be it'll be a super cool opportunity that very few of these type of pools are built around the world, and very few of the uh, clients will let us back into their yards when we're finished with them. So for sure, we got a couple of questions out there that were just basic, Joe, that we'll start with, but. Um, one asked, you saw that a bunch of your staff hold WU certifications, and do you feel achieving those credentials has helped elevate your staff and your company operations? I feel like we teed that up so we can uh, promote Watershape University, but since it's there, let's go with it. Yeah, I mean, I literally, every time a class comes out, I think I'm done taking classes, and then you guys just keep coming up with cooler stuff, but our, our team definitely has um, seen improvement from it. Just... Um, investing as a company, investing in your employees, them knowing that you want them to succeed and showing them that by giving them the tools to succeed better. Um, absolutely, they'll improve no matter what, just because they know that you care about them. The, the knowledge that they learn, we do it in a classroom setting where, where we can sit down and stop the video and explain myself or our construction manager. Uh, we explain this is, you know, maybe this is something that was described that works really well in Arizona, but in Colorado, it's a little different. And this is why. So we can actually, you know, make sure everyone is learning uh, not only the best way to, to accomplish things, but also um, what works best in our area. And they absolutely have been, continued to improve. We, I, our team is badass, and a lot of it is because they know that we care about them and we provide them all the tools that they need to succeed. Well, I think the trick is, Joe, like you brought up, is that it's the core, the collaboration between all the different members of this group as well. Like even for us, we don't design a lot of projects in Colorado. So since we started working with you on a couple of these projects, we've also learned from you guys on what you do differently that we've not not taken into account or how you guys manage your chemicals or what you, you know. So when we work to projects like this, it's collaborative. We all learn from each other. When we teach classes, the same thing happens, whether I'm, a, whether I'm taking the class or whether I'm the admin of the class, like the, the end result is we've learned from each other and we grow stronger. And then you find all these little tentacles that get out into the pool swimming world. So when you have a new opportunity, like a movable floor system, you have resources to reach out to and know how to get the right guys involved. So you end up with a successful project. So that's, that's probably the biggest thing that's added to the education side. So 
Absolutely. Uh, somebody else got a question too on when that floor is up, what kind of railing systems or what are you doing for the fall protection around the perimeter of that negative edge side of that pool? Uh, we have less than 30 inches everywhere except for the, the catch basin. And we have a temporary grading system in there, but there will be a raised grading system that's taller with uh, some Mexican beach pebble over, over it. So there will be less than 30 inches everywhere. So you're keeping it within your fall protection range or, yep. or, or end up in landscape. So um, <laughs> since you guys self-perform most of your work, how, how difficult are jobs like this to take on when it takes up so much resources? Uh, we're booked out basically 12 months in advance all the time. So my, my biggest thing is controlled growth. Um, we are we never over promise. We try not to oversell. Uh, yeah, it took, but when I, when I know I'm going to build this pool, then I basically just blocked out six weeks for the majority of our company. Uh, we have guys that specialize just in plumbing. We have guys that just do our tile. We have guys, two crews that just do front end. So both of our front end crews come together for this one. And then if there's no tile to do, no plumbing to do, our two managers in both of those areas also could run a front end job. So they join um, and they just uh, kick it in the ass together. So it's all about just planning and knowing what, what we're capable of, and making sure that we're not oversold. I, so I get this question a lot. I'm, it's not one on the forum yet, but how do you manage budgets and costs on a project like this? It's obviously, you know, even prior to the changes during construction, you remember we probably had 50 design changes through this process. And we were, this this client, can, if he saw something new, we'd have to find a way to shoehorn it into the job. But how do you guys manage the, the budget and cost structure on a project of this sort? Yeah, so we, uh, we, we, provided a, a, a single cost for the whole project, uh, but we put a timeline in there. That's the biggest factor for us is projects that get the, the timeline gets drawn out too far, then we start to lose money. We're still going there to check our, our pressure on our pipes and clean up whatever um, inside of the pool. So uh, we make sure that we put an estimated mobilization date. If we don't mobilize before that, it costs more. If we don't finish before our estimated completion date, this one was a little different with change orders as we were going through. Um, it was at the very end of the project, I was trying to keep up with change orders, but he was so rapid fire with everything. At the end of the project, I spent probably two days reviewing full scope of work, every picture, redlining, highlighting, uh, very detailed to make sure that if we didn't install something, for instance, we had some secondary sanitation systems. We ended up not having room for those in the mechanical room. So I took those out. So you got to credit back. So at the very end, I produced one large change order for all the small things that got changed um, that we had either verbal or written confirmation about, but not an official change order. It was, it was really, um, at the end, I think it was only like a couple grand of stuff that wasn't on change orders. But uh, yeah, it's really just looking at the details, making sure having a million pictures so that you can go back, make sure that you installed everything the way properly and having an awesome client. If this client was a hard ass at all, then this project would have had a lot of delays because of all the changes, uh, making sure that we get everything approved. Um, and really in hindsight, we're lucky that he wasn't a hard ass because we could have lost out on some of those changes, but it was, it was so rapid fire. Um, we just kept going. We yeah, got I think the being client, picking the right client is more key than sometimes the right project, right? We've luckily walked away from some, but we've accidentally not walked away from some of them, some of them as well. And so you, you learn quickly uh, early on in the interview process, maybe which clients are not ideal, especially for super complicated jobs, because it will it will bite you and, and delay and cause major problems if you can't work together. So, yeah, I really, you know, looking at when we first looked at this project with the first twin skate pool. I told my guys, it's just a big cover box. Every pool that we build has an automatic cover. All it is is just one huge cover box. It's There's no steps, there's no detail. It's eight feet deep, the other one. And by the time we're done, you look back on it and you're like, okay, that wasn't that wasn't nearly as intense or uh, as as it was intimidating before you, before you mobilize. So mobilizing on this one, it's still just a swimming pool. We're doing the same thing that we do on just a normal backyard pool. We're just, 
uh, making sure that, you know, maybe there's more steel, there's definitely more depth, uh, there's tighter tolerances, but really what we aim for every time is, is to be as close to perfect as possible. So uh, I wouldn't say it was much different. There are some things like all tile, we'll put a, a budget in uh, instead if there's a subcontractor. Um, if it's something that's totally new, that's not just a swimming pool box that someone else is installing a movable floor system inside of, then we've started just because of my conversations with you, Rick, we started to do some, some more TNM for the, uh, the unknown projects. Yeah, if you can break them down into small enough parts, you can usually get your hand around it, but sometimes they get big enough to where it's it's tough to get those parts broken down. But um, communication and everything else with the client and, and having your accounting very clean, right? So yeah. what, what was your time frame on this when you guys start to finish, regardless of the design process, but when you guys broke ground to finish, how many? How, what was your overall schedule? Well, there's a lot of other work going on. So it probably took us six weeks to get concrete placed. It probably took Luke and Amy um four months maybe to get all the tile in to it with twinscape because they had to work in conjunction with twinscape there is a lot of other contractors around the pool that uh, had breaks in the work that we could do so um i mean it's been two and a half years and and he's just about to start swimming yeah, so that, that was the point I was trying to make is when you get to a project like this, these are not 90 day or six months projects, they, they consume a lot of time, um, and they stretch out because there'll be time off site, then back on site, there'll be a lot of different details. So that's the other part that you got to start accounting for is, is how much, how much time or how much you got to be very nimble, because you got to be able to jump back in when they need you as well. Um, but it does take considerable time. And then Jack, on your side, give them a sense of if, if we're ready to process an order a movable floor system from from the executing the order what's the time frame to get that product manufactured and shipped to the u.s and ready for install yeah so we we usually say it'll be about uh you know th three to four months uh by the time if we actually get that contract signed you know not including design phase like three four months we can get on the boat send it over here so somebody asked again, how was this fixed price or cost plus? But Joe, you answered that. I think this was a fixed price job with some change orders, right? Yeah, fixed price with a lot of change orders. And it's it's like like you said, Rick, and I think you probably remember, I go through every plan, look at every word on every page, on every detail, and make sure I have completely understand it. I actually redraw everyone's plans to make sure that it helps me go through the building process as I redraw plans. So before we had a signed contract, I, I had a very solid understanding of, of what it was gonna take for us to build it. That's, that's critical for sure, right? So um, we, yeah, we, we still struggle sometimes to make sure we're planning well enough ahead and reviewing our own drawings well enough before we're breaking ground. And so the the preemptive amount of time you spend with the complexity of a job like this and the back and forth pieces like i said this is we've done a number of movable floors but this by far for the footprint is a very complicated movable floor it's got a lot of other aspects to it it's not just a simple buoyancy pack and, and a cable system um so you really got to plan ahead and then you got to be able to help your other trades like alpen tile everybody else understand what's their actual scope what are they going to do it's not just tile a vessel now they got a tile like you said we got to disassemble pieces and parts then tile those parts and put it back into place um, and it, there's a lot to that. It's not easy to just pick up off of a drawing to understand what the scope is, what the square footage of materials are. Um, all those things add dramatically to, to the cost of the project. Mm -hmm. And so you got to plan very well ahead. Yeah, I know. So like, for instance, we take, we review your plans in as much depth as possible. Then we produce our scope of work. And for this project, our scope of work for the pool and the spa was which is just our list of inclusions and exclusions was probably like 15 pages or something so doing it um, with a fixed price and defining everything that we include and everything that we exclude makes it so that there's no question of oh was joe gonna cock the joint between the coping and the deck or not it's listed in in our scope of work um, so we're not going to miss out on those arguments and then us having to do something because we didn't say it was excluded and it was assumed we we're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have been very detailed from go, which is, again, it's even a training piece for us because you'll come back with our plans redlined 
multiple times with stuff either we didn't catch or something you want to do differently. And we got we to learn from those and also get the plans even more detailed to, to make them work better in the field. Um, somebody asked about housing and travel allowance for Luke and Amy um, and where do they stay? So I don't know what we've done it in the past with them multiple times. And we usually have to include those kind of things in our, in our budget, unless they package it as an entire budget. So what did you guys do on this project? Yeah. So for subcontractors and especially for Luke and Amy, we basically, we build in a, an allowance and then um, they will produce their, their estimate. And then I basically just, tell the homeowner, make sure that the homeowner understands tent, heat, uh, and stay. We we will pay for their rent. As long as they have a kitchen, then we don't pay them per diem. So we obviously give them what they want, kitchen, um, wash machine, dryer, all those things. And then we just bill additionally uh, if it's over our allowance. So generally, we, we provide an allowance for what they expect their tile cost to be everything else for them to get here, to stay here, and to provide the work environment for them is billed additionally to the homeowner. And there's very descriptive lines making sure that they understand that. Especially when they get extended timeframes trying to work in between and around the movable floor systems, they could be there for extra weeks that they couldn't plan for very well. And so, or weather could, could affect you a number of reasons, right? So yeah, it's a pretty, I mean, allowances are, you know, it's not cost plus, but it's many portions of this job are broken down into little cost plus nuggets, right? So we've got enough money to work with. We we want a budget the client can understand. We think we're going to be in that range. And, and when you've done it enough, you're accurate. But then as time extends out, you'll see what your, your consumables and your billables have to be. Um, and the client knows that's not an open checkbook, but they know what those costs will be by week by week and month by month. Yep, exactly. Well, I think that's all we have for current questions. Anybody's got a last question they want to jump in quick, they should throw it out there. We'll get to it. Um, Joe and Jack, thank you very much for putting this together. Joe, you guys have proven you've got a uh, an amazing team out there putting together very complicated projects, um, and you've and you've done a lot for the for the industry, feeding back on the on the education side for all your people, but also feeding back into the education system for the ones that are involved in it as well. So, um, one other question somebody had was fall protection. Um, we probably didn't see a lot of that through the construction process and some of it's surely there and some of it's not there. You saw a lot of scaffolding in place um, to try to keep people from working on ladders and, and, and having concerns with that. But someone did have some questions. What'd you guys do specifically to fall protection? During construction? Yep. Uh, you pretty much saw it. There were scaffolding. Um, Post-construction is asking. Yep. Yeah, so we, we do have less than 30 inches drop to the landscaping around the pool. Uh, and then we have a, right now a temporary grate system in the catch basin, which is the only place that has more than a 30 inch drop. And that temporary grating system, once the landscaping gets a bit further, is gonna raise up higher and then be filled in with a uh, Mexican beach pebble, I believe, uh, which is gonna have less than that 30 inches of drop. So the, the hillside, the look from uh, down the hillside makes it look like the edge of the hill is closer to the pool, but it actually comes out uh, like five feet and then steps down with boulders and things. Perfect. Lauren, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, advance it, Joe, so we can talk about what's coming up. Yep. Don't, don't forget to follow us on Instagram also. Joe, there we go. Lauren, yes. you want to read through that? Yeah, sure, no problem. So next week we have um, Cy Reddy of Camera Eye. He's going to talk about um, AI in the pool industry and uh, manufacturing service and also just safety concerns and, and how this can, can help our industry. Um, we are going to do a live version, live online of SketchUp. So we have eight hours that is available right now um, that you can take on demand. And then the live online section is, um, actually that, that date is wrong, June 10th. And it is up on our website to sign up for. Um, we actually moved it back to the 10th. And also the advanced water shape construction that Rick was talking about. And also Joe that mentioned that hopefully we'll include a field trip to this project. If not, it'll be the other one that has the twinscape 
flooring in, and we're very excited about bringing our uh, construction school to Boulder. And that's Friday, Saturday, 21st and 22nd of July. We just nailed the, uh, the lineup for Vegas, so you'll be seeing that soon. Actually, the whole show site's gonna be up for registration June 1st. Um, so uh, got a lot planned for Vegas and we hope that you guys can all join us too. And you'll see most of us there. Yes, yes. And a lot of our, our hopefully a lot of our uh, vendors as well. So thank you, Joe. This was great. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Jack. Um, we'll see you again. <laughs>